Would anyone mind if I say yes to this girl being our hostess? Again, I'm pretty sure people say there's literally no difference in terms of any form of storyline for them. It's just the appearance. And she's the hidden off, hidden off one. She's literally as good as any, yeah. Uh, there's literally no difference. She's the hidden one. She's the exclusive one. She seems clever enough for the job. Why? Because she knows how to use a phone. Kirio, I... I I, I know you're a four-year-old and you struggle with knowing how to use phones, but just knowing how to use a phone doesn't mean you're clever, but all right. The sighting stats are a bit different, but it doesn't matter. Very friendly, too. She's... Oh, okay, she's also... Kiryu, you, you're being very presumptuous here. You're being very presumptuous here. You're very presumptuous in just assuming, hmm, this woman is... You, is, good, is uh, using her phone. That means she's clever and friendly and motivated, but she stresses easily. Like, what? <laughs> just the op uh, open opening is just the hint for their starting stats? Yeah, but just lore-wise, it's just Kiri being very judgmental. <laughs> it's just him being mean. I'll approach her. Let's see what I can come up with. Excuse me, miss. Yes? Ah, I like that answer. Isn't it a little uh, too early to agree? I haven't even asked you my question yet. Gary, you, you dumbass! <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, uh, shut up. That's like the lamest thing ever. But somehow I don't mind coming from you. So what? Are you trying to pick me up or something? <laughs> that is the stupidest fucking... Oh my god. Dumbass energy and dad energy. This is so stupid. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm trying to find hostess for, ho um, find hostesses for my club. Your club, Kiryu. I want uncut diamonds that glimmer in the night. Like you. Huh. Well, that's not the cheesiest line I ever heard, then I don't know what is. But I like cheesy lines. Hmm. Well, I am pretty free as it is, so okay, I might as well go check it out. Thank you. My name's Kiryu, by the way. Kazuma Kiryu. The Dragon of Dojima, fourth, <laughs> ex-fourth chairman of the Tojo clan, just gives out the, a business card with the entirety of that on there. <laughs> Kiryu's not the biggest himbo in the series, but he's the most visible. <laughs> See, that's... That was my philosophy of why I, I feel like I have to justify the water scam way too frequently. I feel like Kiryu would fall for the water scam, but apparently he wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's a dumbass in, like, social interactions, but he's not a dumbass when it comes to scams and stuff. <laughs> Kiri's business card would be <laughs> huge if he included everything he's done. It's just a, a, a bit too much. Just, like, K Kazuma goddamn motherfucking Kiryu. Um, <laughs> Dragon of Dojima, ex-chairman of the, um, ex-fourth chairman of the Tojo clan. Owner of, um, Morning Glory Orphanage. What else would be on there? <laughs> the what? Running Kamarocho Real Estate, <laughs> ex-president of Kamarocho Real Estate, um, ex-manager of Forshine, <laughs> real estate business management entertainment problem solver. I mean, that sums it up well. It's also he he has one hell of a fucking resume. Lead the way, by, um, before that, I'm Hiromi, 21 years old, and I know I might not look like it, but I want to be a pasta chef someday. Anyway, nice, super nice to meet you. Come along, Hiromi. Don't worry, we'll make Maki clear out one of her four lockers for you. <laughs> Welcome to our club, we specialize in helping our hostesses reach the top of the industry. But first, we need to decide on a stage name for you. Something that would fit the persona you want to project. The, the, the girl that you choose matters so little that you can even name them. I can't wait to not care about that. I can't wait to not care about being a chef. Well, I mean, like, that's been a thing in previous hostess, um, hostess things for this, where it's just like, they're a hostess for now for making money. Their ambitions are to do something else, like be a manga artist or anything like that. And this is a way to, for them to do money. And they'll enjoy it and they'll have fun with it while they're doing it and everything like that. But they're using this while they work on their actual um, inspirations and everything. And Kiri has been fully supportive of that for all the girls before. Where it's just like, yeah, I know, you're probably not going to be a... You, yeah, if you don't want to be a hostess forever, that's totally fine. If you want to work on, like, something else and then when you are able to achieve that dream, you leave here. That's totally fine. I accept that. If you want to be like Iker and just drink your entire life and have a party as your job, then that's also fine.
now to fit with my darts live name, should I also call should I call her on the opposite end? Just call her Cockmaster. If we have a hostess called Cockmaster, is that is that too much? Would people be willing to request Cockmaster as their hostess? I also feel like I should just leave her name as Hiromi and let her have some form of identity to her. Their name doesn't even matter. Why would their dream and personality matter? <laughs> That'll certainly attract a very particular clientele. Okay. What if... I I'm just going to do this. Oh, I can't do the whole- damn it! Damn it! <laughs> damn it! <laughs> My name is too long! <laughs> damn it. <laughs> damn it. And I've literally grabbed a random woman off the street and told her to give up on her dreams of becoming a baker. To come do this, I think the very least I can leave her. I'm gonna leave her with her name. <laughs> Hiromi, that's a good name. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> For now, and you'll use that while working at the club. And also while you're outside of the club, and also on legal forms, and also with friends and family, given that it's your name. <laughs> Personally, I don't think Cock and Ball 2 lives up to the legacy of Cock and Ball 1. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I couldn't fit the full name. <laughs> Cock and Ball 2, Electric Boogaloo. I'm just excited for Cock and Ball 3 beyond Thunderdome, because what's the Thunderdome? <laughs> you got it, then I'm ready to begin when you are. Alright, let's get you changed into an outfit worthy of your grace and charm. See, as soon as you walk out that door, you'll be reborn as a head-turning queen of the night. <laughs> oh my god, this exists in this game too. <gasps> oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Oh shit, one piece dress, sexy dress, and a gorgeous dress. These are these are literally the same outfits, actually. The, well, they're, at least they're very, very similar to the ones in the previous games. Shit, I didn't realize that all the stuff from Zero came from this. Beautiful Sam one piece, revealing, but classic. Sexy trim, and dazzling to the max. <laughs> So when they brought, so when they made the cabaret club in uh, um, Yakuza Zero, it was basically here's this but extended shitloads, because <laughs> you've got six of them. The dress up is similar, but everything else about hostess management is very different. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go for this one because it reminds me of Ika's dress the most. Uh, RGG Studio not reusing assets would be more wild. <laughs> hey, they make these games like once a fucking year. If they want to reuse assets, they fucking can. If the, they make these games every year and it's way too much and I feel sorry for the people who work there in terms of I imagine there's a lot of crunch when you're releasing a game this fucking big every fucking year. They can reuse assets if they want to cut down the work a little bit. Reuse assets for like seven years later? Who gives a shit? Hopefully not people who play fucking Yakuza. <laughs> oh, is that the new girl? Yeah, and you are? I'm Aya. Oh, you must be the new guy. I guess that makes me your senpai. Mm, I suppose I should teach you the tricks of the trade to help this job go smoothly. Otherwise, I, I won't be much of a senpai now, would I? So when it comes down to a ho um, doing as a hostess, customer satisfaction's everything, right? Right. That's why it's important to get a grasp on the customer's preferences and do your best to satisfy them. You should be able to get an idea of what the guests want when you walk the floor. Anyway, just get out there and see what you can learn. Use your eyes and ears. So you're saying that I should gather information and coordinate Hiromi's attributes and appearances. That way she can better satisfy the customers. I'm controlling her entire life now. <laughs> I grabbed this girl off the street and I'm controlling her entire life. She's barely even having dialogue. And the fact that I grabbed her off the street and <laughs> I made a sub sorry about her. Am I being a little too much? By the way, do your best and don't get stressed. Both of you guys. Okay. Mission one, get a feel for your customers' preferences by walking around the club. Return to the break room and coordinate your hostess to fit their ideal image. Time to hit the floor. 
Hey, we actually get to walk around this place. Okay. What's up, buddy? Please walk the premises. Evaluate the custom preferences. Anything you'd like to know in the meantime? Uh, I'll after I learn the preferences, I'll ask. I'll ask you. I think I've seen like one complaint about animations looking bad because they get reused, but it said it was just a minor thing and they still love the game. Okay. I love the reuse of animations sometimes because seeing the same animation used in different situations is hilarious. Going through Yakuza 0 and the amount of times of seeing this dance was amazing. Every time someone started doing this dance, it was fucking fun as hell. The fact that Kiryu does the specific Kiryu walk for every sub story is amazing. Or even just going and you just have the walking erection doing his dance in Zero. And then you come across Mashima as a zombie, I think, in Kawami, and he's doing the same thing. That's hilarious when it reuses the animations like that. That is hilarious. The reuse of animations is what makes it funny. Like, reusing an animation half the time is the joke. <laughs> she should be drop dead gorgeous. I want a nice gorgeous girl to come sit on my lap. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Any gorgeous girls around here? Hello? Harumi doesn't seem to have any customers. Is that her? Oh no, she's in, a, in, a, in the dress. I couldn't tell that that was her dress. She's literally just there on her phone. <laughs> she's literally just there on her phone. And I nice gorgeous girl to come sit on my lap. Okay, Go gorgeous. I want to be floored by how gorgeous my- gorgeous. I think- I think I get an idea of what the people are after. I think people want someone who is, um, what's the word? Gorgeous. I think they want a gorgeous girl. All right, about procedure. Tell me about baby's procedure. First, try forward, you go on the floor, pick up the vibe, use the information, spruce up the lady of the evening. Do that three times, that's considered a service round. Then you get your results and it's on to the next one. Revenue depends entirely on how our guests perceive their time here. So we need to work in concert with our staff to satisfy their every um, need and want. Makes sense? What would you like to know? Okay. Um, <laughs> they're making it easy for this first session, but you'll start having more varied customer desires later. They don't just want all want someone who's gorgeous later? Okay. Tell me more about inspection. Basically, you'll be walking the premises and getting a feel for the clientele. It's easy for you to tell what kind of hostess they're in the mood for by listening. Some customers so solely for appearance, others for a certain area of proficiency, a service trait, if you will. Takeaway here is our customers won't always want the same thing. That's what makes inspection so critical. Moreover, our customers might have multiple preferences, so it's important to decide which preference to prioritize, as well as take other, more subtle factors into consideration. So if you've got like five people asking for one thing and two people asking for one thing, then put most of your points into that five and then a little bit into the two. Should be easy because everyone just yells out what type of girl they want. <laughs> They're literally sitting next to other girls, just being like, like the guy's literally just sitting there. Three girls on each arm, just being like. Damn, I wish some bitches around here were actually fucking hot. <laughs> Asshole, piece of shit, dude, honestly. What a scumbag. <laughs> so you can have the girls coordinate their clothes, makeup, accessories, and other things to give a particular vibe. I want a girl who's just vibing. Honestly, that's the type of hostess club I'd go for. I want a girl who's just vibing. Because it's because it's because it's, it's Ica. <laughs> I have taste, and we all know what there are, and I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> Of course, items of makeup have already been provided by the club for three years. Anything else we'll need to pay for up front. I'm sure that goes for, without saying. And again, should be obvious, any expenses we incur will be deducted from our total club revenue. Rightfully so. Clothes and accessories can be swapped out over and over again, but please be aware you'll have to pay each time a hostess gets her hair done or her nails done. Beauty's not cheap. That one makes sense. You can't just buy a hairstyle and just leave it at that. Mixing matching certain clothes and cosmetics can just surprising effects. I guess you can call them bonus effects. Try as combinations as you can. Okay. Yeah, this does seem more complex. <laughs> I'm fine for now. Uh, ask any questions you have and I'll be happy to give an answer. Okay. 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 How do I... Oh, do I go in here? Okay. <laughs> the way things work around here is that girls go out onto the floor a total three times to serve customers. Each service is followed by a break period. During that time, you can train your hostess a choice and coordinate their appearance. 
Let's find training another time. Okay. Hi, Hiromi. They're literally a blank slate. They don't even talk. Okay, dress up, training, check stats, go to club. Okay. So her looks are a D, her smarts are a Z, and her charisma is a C. Uh, she's way more into refined currently than cute, flashy, or gorgeous. Okay. So if I gotta dress up, we want to lean into the gorgeous. The crazy amount of maths into the combos and stuff and how much it adds. Much more complex than Zero and Kwame too. Oh, I ha Oh, God. I struggled maxing characters out in fucking Kwame too. Shit. <laughs> um... Can I not get a list of, like, any stats? Like... It doesn't even... None of these say... None of these say gorgeous. None of them say... Okay. Boy, who cares when it looks this good? <laughs> nice, casual, and clean. Old standby. Oh, natural, no ifs, ands, or buts. Nothing classy and dignified look. Modern and elegant. What? I was looking at the stats. Oh, I'm wearing the gorgeous dress. Okay. I'm wearing... I'm currently... She's currently wearing the gorgeous... I'm looking... I was looking at the descriptions. Not the names. That's my bad. <laughs> it tells me very little about what the stats are here. Um, how am I meant to know which ones to do? Other than experiment, like, because I have to pay money for each one. And I can't check the stats here. I have to back out to the other screen to check the stats. Um. Nice no, so suit. Look no further for a luxurious style. No in-game guide, just gotta experiment. I you used a guide. I'm considering using a guide because I don't want this to take a million years. <laughs> Gorgeous watch. Again, I'm not noticing the names. I'm looking at the descriptions. It's also 960,000, so I can't really afford it. <laughs> it's also 960,000. <laughs> T, showy heart, okay. I don't know what gorgeous means. Should I look at a go gorgeous nails? Uh, I'll do the gorgeous nails. <laughs> okay, the rings are expensive as fuck. Don't even worry about looking at them. Yeah, we have so we have the nails. Are the nails still in place? Yes. Okay. Um. Cutesy look, flat, wild side. Clean, simple, refreshing, and supposed to be showy. Cutest girl in town. I don't know. Um. <laughs> um. That's cutesy look, wild side. I, I don't know, go for that one. <laughs> I don't know, go for that <laughs> Trying to work this out on your own sounds like it is difficult and annoying as shit. <laughs> There's also no descriptions on which one of these are the best. I was gonna go for that one because I'm always a fan of winged eyeliner. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for that one. Um, lipstick. The shiny one. Make it more red. <laughs> I think without looking this Easy up, run. this would take a long time. Hey! Okay, I got close, I got more into the flashy, but the gorgeous, she's like halfway on. Are you fucking kidding me? 
It's literally just experiment and fuck around. I can't even go back into it to change it. This seems like this sucks. <laughs> this doesn't seem like it's going to be... Like, doing this without a guide does not seem fun. <laughs> doing this without a guide does not seem fun. <laughs> it sounds like a pain in the ass. One dress up for a time block. The fact that you've literally just got a trial and error it and it costs money every time you do it? What? That sounds annoying. Go to the club. Oh, there she is. There she is. Shit, does that make me shallow? She seems to be keeping herself occupied. Okay. Everyone just wants a gorgeous girl. The sub story is bad. Okay. Okay. At least people have. Been, uh, okay. At least. At least there seems to be a consensus here. That. Yeah. Like, I'm fine to an extent with trial and erroring to get the right things. But the fact that when you go into it, it literally doesn't even tell you what stats things are going to increase. Like, if it's called a gorgeous dress, you'll know it increased the gorgeous aspect and things like that. Yes. But for the rest of it, I've literally got to guess shit, and then it sucks, and then it's... What? <laughs> Without a guide, this sounds not fun. I'm not going to use a guide right now, because it's literally the beginning. But after this, I'm going to use a guide. Go out, check what type of girl they want, go back in and trial and error it out. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> That doesn't sound fun, and it sounds like it'll take a long time and a pain in the ass, and oh my god, you only get the, the amount of money for the entire, like, all three time blocks together. Exact minigames in 4 too. Fucking great. Um, do, I don't even know if the makeup changes any of the stats, because it doesn't even give you a description for that shit. <laughs> I, don't e I don't even know for that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Change the earrings, because these were... No, we had the petite ones, and she's already not flashy, so... <laughs> Makeup effects stats? Ugh. Oh, this doesn't sound fun to just trial and error, error it on your own. It sounds like it would take a million attempts to actually get anywhere half decent. <laughs> it honestly seems like it would take so long to get that. Oh my god. Does the color affect it? Does the color affect it? <laughs> Go for the middle one, because I feel like going for the top one is going into the flashy aspect of it. What about the eyebrows? Uh, I'm just picking randomly. <laughs> uh, there's a trophy for having maxed out stat, which is just a pain without a guide. That's unfair. Yeah, after this attempt, when I come back to this each time, I think I'll look at a guide. <laughs> I think I will look at a guide in the future. Also technically missable. Oh god. <laughs> and she's pretty far into the gorgeous side, she's just also into the flashy side a lot as well. So at least the Cabaret Club in Zero and Kiwami 2 has like a fun mini game attached to it. Looking for a gorgeous gun tonight, leave until I find one. We already have one! Her gorgeousness is almost maxed out. Oh my goodness. Just gave it to herself? Yeah. I could go for a gorgeous girl right about now. Shit, how much more gorgeous can she possibly fucking be? <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, I'll head back. And the fact that you just gotta kinda slowly walk around the club and come back. Way to go, Hiromi-san. You really got a nice aesthetic there. And I know for a fact that customers have noticed too. Keep up the good work and you'll be number one in no time. Thanks for your support. That's her first dialogue she's had since coming here. Wait, no. She said like one or two things when we she very first got here. We also just gotta stick together, you know? What's up? Kiryu-san, Hiromi-san's rank went up. I can tell you you've both been putting in a lot of work. Keep up the excellent work. Great work today. Let's aim for the next milestone.
Oh, okay, so... I, I thought we were gonna go in for a third time. She just wasn't out there the first time. Okay. She wasn't out there the first time for, for that. Okay. She was, yeah, she was sitting at the table with no customers. Okay, so she only got to serve people two times for that. Okay. Alright, well... We made 13,000 in profit. We've lost money considering we started with 100,000, but okay. <laughs> She's now number 25. <laughs> that feels like that's going to take a very long time to do anything. <laughs> what I'm getting the impression of there is that will take quite a while to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, go, let's go to the other cabaret club while we're here. Just we want to go. We want to go to this multiple times to get our rank up with now, right? So we'll go. We'll go back here for a second. I'm also wondering if it's worthwhile looking up a guide for accessories for different girls here, because I don't even. I, I mean, I don't even have any accessories right now, so I don't even think it matters. Like. <laughs> I haven't bought any equipment or clothing or anything at this point, so I, it, so that doesn't even matter. I can't even wear the right ones right now, but still. Like, I want to do everything and I want to experience it proper, properly, but if without a guide, it will take forever, then, like, for the sake of an LP, that I might need to cut that down. I know she always wear the same outfit. Is that normal? I don't have a gift to give her. <laughs> so I can also give gifts. And she wants me to wear different outfits when I come back here. Okay. You know what? We're going to do a little bit of money. Let's get some Yamazaki this time. I don't know if she's into Yamazaki, but we'll find out. I'll have this. Alrighty. Hunger it all. She didn't like the chocolate. So we want something better than the chocolate. Do you like some veggie sticks? Y'all have this. Understood. She, she, I think I, I, think, I think I picked the most neutral options possible. She literally just said okay to everything. Can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Of course, I'll have it for you right away. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> and there we go. And she mixes up a drink. And we cheers the drink. And then she lights my cigarette. <laughs> okay, the introduction part of the cabaret clubs take a little bit of time here. You do have to go through a fair bit before you get to the point where you actually have these interesting parts with the, with the dialogue and the character stuff. There is quite a lot to just the mix the drink, have the drink, light the cigarette, order the food, tell the person you're ordering the food. That takes a little bit of time. So Manana had her birthday the other day. Oh, congratulations. How old is she? She's 79 years young. That's great. Hope she stays happy and healthy. Oh, she will. She's full of energy now. And believe me, she's got plenty left in the tank. I would know because she practically raised me all by herself. Is that right? Yeah, my dad had a terminal illness and he died right before I started elementary school. Jesus, getting into the tragedy early. From then on, my mom took over the family Bingata business and she was hardly ever at home. I haven't really talked to my mom since then. Jesus. So yeah, my dad deserves nothing but the best. Oh, you know, I was known for a tie life expectancy. Still not getting along with, uh, with your mother? Guess you're a grandma's girl. None of these sound super positive. None of these sound good. I'm going to say this. Guess you're a grandma's girl. Pretty much. My nan has always been there for me, no matter what the situation. As a caretaker and as a friend. That's <laughs> special. <laughs> I forgot, did you use the guy for the hostess dates in the previous game? Um, I don't think so. I don't think I did. What miss? You missed the entire introduction of how long it took to talk to a hostess. And also the fact that I complained about how long it was going to take to do the hostess management stuff. That's basically it. <laughs> She complained that I always wear the same clothes. 
which just means she doesn't know Kiri very well. The dude's been wearing the same fucking suit for several years. Like two decades at this point. <laughs> and her her dad died, and she likes it. And she likes a grandma, and I chose the right answer by calling her a grandma's girl, and that got half a half. <laughs> and I'm te I'm tempted to look up a guide for what to wear and eat for the girls. Not the answers for these though. I like actually trying to think of the right answers for this, but what to wear and eat and stuff. That's just trial and error, and I don't know where to. And that stuff costs money, so spending money is fucking up. This is the best time I've worn a different shirt in ten years. Yeah, he's got the Hawaiian shirt on now. It's not. There's some color on his red shirt now. <laughs> But then your luck should keep on kicking way past 100. Yeah. Jerry the Conversationalist. Yeah. <laughs> what do you uh, think when you hear someone speak standard Japanese? You know, the Tokyo dialect. Uh, you mean Kiryu's accent? Not sure. I hear it all the time, so... <laughs> well, to me, it gives off this sophisticated sort of vibe. Like you're from the center of civilization. This is the biggest city. And no matter how cool someone is, it always sounds a little funny when they let out a word or a phrase that only a local would say. <laughs> Calling out Kiryu anytime he refers to anything, specifically specifically Okinawan. <laughs> so yeah, seeing a strong, handsome guy like you speaking standard Japanese is really impressive. Kind of gets my heart racing. <laughs> I admire those local dial uh, dialects. I'll say something Okinawan. <laughs> so you like the way I talk? Would she prefer me to try and say something funny, compliment her accent, or just lean into and lean into the compliment she's giving me? Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna compliment her accent back. I actually admire those local dialects. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it's true that local dialects give off a unique sense of warmth, or at the very least provide context. But in my case, I'm better off hiding it. Don't worry, you can be yourself around oh. me. Oh no, the moment I say something Okinawan, you'll think I'm a total country girl. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that was a bad option. What kind of guys do you like now? Huh? Where's this coming from? Oh, I was just curious. Are you into guys who are way too big for the tiny seats that we're sitting on? So his knees are like sitting really high into the air? Do you like them? Not really sure if I have another answer for that. Uh, I never really got to know any of the guys I dated. We always broke up before I could figure them out. So, I probably don't have a type. Or if I do, I have no clue what idea what it is. Is it hard for you to reject guys? You'd go out with someone you didn't know? How is that possible? None of these sounds good either. None of these sound good. None of them sounds good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is that me to reject guys or something? It is. I just feel so, so, so bad letting them down. I'm sure being popular doesn't help yeah. either. <laughs> I wish. I guess she likes that apparently. I'm so unpopular with guys, it's almost scary. <laughs> You're our hostess. <laughs> this is a good place to stop, but I still have plenty of money. Should we keep going? I'll call it that <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, it's about that time. Leaving already? Okay, so you can go for longer on the other ones. We'll see you again. Now then. Oh, you had a good as time as I did. We got half a heart of progress. I think what I'll do for the hostesses is I'll look up, I'll get a guide for the food and the accessories to wear because that stuff costs money and I have a limited amount of money and if I fuck up those and I want to do good at those, then I need to grind money. But I won't look up the answers for the actual talking and stuff like that. Because if I look up the answers for talking and stuff like that, I'm going to be paying less attention to what they're actually saying and everything like that. And the whole point is that you learn who the, their characters to build up to their substory and stuff like that. But... The food and drink and clothes is literally trial and error. So I might look up a guide for that so I don't have to spend a bunch of money on stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> Popularity and lucky bracelet are the things to wear for everyone. At least for now. There's better stuff, um, but it's later on in the game. Okay, well, that's simple. 
Where popularity and lucky bracelet. Where do I get those? I don't recognize those from any of the shops that I've been to. Thanks for requesting me, and thanks for going along with my weird conversational topics. When I'm with you, I feel like I can talk about anything. <laughs> with, not, with all the cat emojis everywhere. I love it. That's not the fucking map. There's still another sub story on this map that we haven't done. I might go down and do that one. Ah, uh, the pawn shop. Let's go. Okay, we'll go. We'll stop by the pawn shop. See how much money that stuff costs, and we'll do that sub story, and we'll probably call it there for today. I'm realizing that we're getting kind of close to three hours. Uh, as I said, when I'm just exploring a city in a Yakuza game, it is so easy for me to just do a bunch of it and just to do 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 a lot. I actually now want to trigger street fights. I actually want to trigger street fights. I get like. 20,000 from it every time, and that's a lot of money for me right now. Whoa. There we go. How about helping some young dudes down their luck? I mean, you're not gonna need it for much longer. 40! I'm 40! I'm fucking 40! What the hell? What the hell? Fuck you. Oh, there's. Oh! Sending in the cavalry afterwards, I see. Wait, I'm near a river. I need a hit. I need heat. <laughs> I desperately need heat. <laughs> oh dear god, ow. I think I do with the crowbar hurts a lot. Ah, oh, there we go. Urgh. So what was the thing to get it to be extra heat? On the on the stance thing? I mean I can taunt. I I know I can taunt and that gives me heat. Although I'm not getting hate from taunting this dude. I'm not get I'm not getting hate from taunting this dude, so I don't I I okay, you know what? You know what? I'm just gonna use an item. I'm gonna use an item, because I'm curious. Uh health and hate a little, there we go. Damn it. He <laughs> had to stand up for that. Hold the button after certain attacks, mostly combos. Okay. Didn't I say press? I think I learned my lesson. Thank you, show me the way. 5,000! Unfair. Okay, it says repeat. Also, taunting needs you to face your opponent, but only works for a bit. I, was, I thought I was taunting, like, I was standing in front of him, like, fighting stance at him and taunting, and it didn't increase my hate. So I don't know if I fucked it up because I taunted at the other dude incorrectly or something. Ooh. Fight me! <laughs> Can I throw someone in front of a car? <laughs> Can I throw someone onto a car? Come over here. Come over here. I can't throw him on the car. <laughs> and actually, I can't the thing when I play this game. Google says it. Yes, it's told not repeat like the, the things say. Okay. 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 Currently, it is on none of the combos that I have. None of my combos do anything with it. <laughs> So, if there's a way to do it, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Any of the combos I currently have don't do anything, so I don't understand that mechanic. <laughs> You're a max hitter, of course, not doing anything. No, but when I was building up heat, there was a point there where I had low heat because I just did a heat move and I was building it up, and it was, and I still wasn't getting anything. <laughs> like it just seemed, like unle like when it says recovery sense, does he do anything differently, or is it just if you hold buttons on attacks, you get extra heat? And it doesn't actually show you or like do anything differently. It's just hold button gives you more hate. Is that how it works? The mechanic is still confusing to me. <laughs> he just holds the pose an extra uh, at the end of a combo for an extra second. Okay. Okay. Any of you want to fight? Whoa. Yes, someone wants to fight here. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna use a hate move on this dude. Okay, I guess. I'll, wait, no, I am gonna use a hate move on this dude. He's down on the ground. Game's not letting me do a hate move on the dude. On the <laughs> okay, get on the ground. I, I just pressed the 
button wrong that time. Okay, get over there. Okay. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what it actually does. Oh, that's- I thought I was going to throw him onto the dude on the ground. Not quite. <laughs> I didn't even get money for that one. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand the mechanic. <laughs> Do you want to fight me? <laughs> it's a little harder to notice who wants to fight me in this game. <laughs> He definitely held the uppercut pose longer than normal. Did he? Did he? <laughs> hey, are you from Tokyo? You're, you're a sub story. She literally ran up to me. She's trying so hard to start the sub story. Hi, yes. Woman curious about Tokyo. Hey, you're not from Okinawa, are you? Did you come here from Tokyo? You can tell just by looking at me. Is it because I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt and I look like I shouldn't be? <laughs> Yeah, I knew it! I've never seen anyone from Okinawa wear that uh, expensive leather shoes with pointy toes like that. Oh, okay. Can you really tell where I'm from just by my shoes? Kiri, you, you wear a basic suit, but your shoes are very flashy, yes. <laughs> never mind that. Anyway, I've always wanted to visit Tokyo. Maybe you can tell me about it. I'll get you something to make up for it. Promise. Sure, why not? <laughs> Guess I can spare a few minutes. Yay, there's a bar I, I like right near here, so let's grab some drinks and talk away. Okay. I'm Kaede Ania. You can just call me Kaede. I'm Kiryu. I used to live in Kamurocho, if you've heard of it. It's one of the seedier parts of Tokyo. Nope, definitely don't know it. So jealous though. Plus I've ever gone to a field trip, um, was a field trip to Kyoto. Aww. And I mean, there's so much to love about Tokyo, right? All we got here in Okinawa is fish and salty air. I don't know, I think Okinawa has its charms. Hey! This is the bar. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah this is about um, Aqua Sky, yeah. It's now the good to Tokyo. Oh, gee, I sure wish I could live up there. But I guess just hearing about it is a good start for now. Sure. What do you want to know? Well, if I'm going to move up there, I would have to find a place to live, right? How much is rent? How am I meant to know rental prices in 2006 for a place in Tokyo? I mean, this game was made for people who live in Japan in 2006 or 7 or 9 or whenever this game came out. I get that. But as a filthy gaijin in the year of 2021. <laughs> I don't know. Are we talking on a monthly basis too here? I mean, 10,000, that's like, uh, that's, no, 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 100,000 yen, that's a thousand, roughly a thousand dollars, or something. Gut! <laughs> My god instinct is just the most expensive, because rent's fucking expensive. Though I live in one of the most expensive cities in the world for rent. So, I don't know how much it actually costs another. I, li like, living in Sydney, my perception of how much rent costs is very fucking warped, because I think it's literally the second highest. I think... Whatever the capital of Singapore is, which I keep forgetting the name of. Whatever the capital of Singapore, I think, is the number one um, in the world. But the Sydney, I think it's literally the second highest rental prices in the world. So, <laughs> it very much throws it completely off whack of just like, how much does shit actually cost? A lot of places do rent on a per month basis. We do it on a per week basis. And it almost costs as cost much as some places cost per month. And I don't even live in the city. I mean, I live in, the, I live in Sydney, but I don't live in the city of Sydney. Um, uh, I'm gonna say a studio for a hundred thousand. Hmm. Studio goes for around a hundred thousand yen. What's a studio? Like a photography studio or something? Why would you live in a place like that? It just means a one-room apartment. You don't really need much more than that if you're living alone. Trust me. hundred grand just for one room? But you can get a whole house down here for that price. Welcome to living in the city. Jeez, people in Tokyo must spend their entire income on rent alone. Welcome to living in a city. <laughs> I think it's all factually true, but it's about the vibe you want to send. Like, if she's wanted to know about the city, she wouldn't care about suburb prices. Okay, okay. So, just factually true, but yeah, okay. 
Not everyone, but I suppose some do, yeah. <laughs> anyway, next question. If I do end up living in Tokyo, should I bring my car with me? Everyone's always driving around the city on TV and stuff. I never had a shop without a car. Anyway, plus I would even get around. I drive into town, uh, I drove into town today after all. Parking fees are expensive. Ditch the car and take the train. Don't drink and drive. I mean, the actual answer of what most people do in Tokyo is walk, right? If Kamurocho is anything like it, very few people drive. <laughs> Ditch the car and take the train. <laughs> Ditch the car. Trains will take you everywhere you need to go. It's Japan. <laughs> what am I going to do with my shopping like that, though? Am I supposed to spend half my time on train just to go buy some fish? There's more than just trains, by the way. We also have subways, taxis, buses, anything you could need. Besides, there are stores everywhere, so half the time you won't even need to get on a train at all. I mean, I guess? But it's so hard to imagine life without a car. Yeah, I know. Think of the utopia the world could be if we got rid of car culture. Sorry, I will rant about that very frequently. I feel like every truthful thing we tell her is just going to make her hate Tokyo, because what, guess what living in a city's like? There you are, Kaede. I knew I'd find you here. Oh, I'm Amiji-chan. You sure do know me well. It's not hard to guess when you always go to the same bar. So, who's this? This is Kiryu-san. He's from Tokyo. We were just chatting. Still thinking about moving? I'm sorry about my friend here, sir. She's so starstruck by the big city. But you're trying to tell her that she won't last a minute up in Tokyo, but she refuses to listen. That's not true. I can do it if I try, you know. I mean, I told you two things about the city, and you're just like... But I like the way this town works for that. It's just like, yeah, well, guess what living in a city is like. Like, if I lived in the heart of Sydney, I, I mean, I don't have a car right now because I can't drive. But, like, I live specifically next to a bus and train station um, because I can't drive. Where if I lived in the city, that would matter as much because, well, you can walk most places or most trains and things would be a lot closer. Please, curious on you know Tokyo best. Tell her why it would be such a bad idea. If you want to go, then go. Your friends are okay. I'll help you move if you want. I honestly feel like her friend is right. Because so out of the two things I told her about the city, she hates them. <laughs> Your friend's right. Fuck the city. Your friend's right, Kaede. It won't be easy. See, he's from Tokyo, and even he agrees with me. Still, I won't know unless I try. Besides, I really want to give it a shot. It might be tough, but if you're really that dead set on going, then there's no point stopping you. Okay, so you just went with that anyway. Your friend is wrong, your friend is right, and fuck your friend. <laughs> but I know you're worried, but if Kaede never gets a chance to do what she wants, she might end up resenting you for it. <laughs> I'll manage, don't worry. And if I need help, I'll just give Kiryu sign a call. What? Is that okay? Well... I, I did tell you to go. I mean, I literally chose the option no, but she went for it anyway. Uh, give me a ring if you need a hand. Wow, well, thanks. It's not much, but take this. I got a burger set. This is just going to be a sub-story that continues when we have a little part of the story that goes back to Kamarocho. That's why, no matter what you choose, she has to go back there. <laughs> That's why she has to go there. We're going to go now. Take care of the tab. Does someone want me to pay for the tab and everything? Sounds like he'll end up in Tokyo before too long. And I'll run into her while we're there. And that's how this works. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. That's a sub-story chain. I, 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 I pick up the vibe you're putting down, video game. I didn't actually finish exploring that, that, um, okay, down there. I'm gonna go down there and just like have a look at the little stores and everything there, and then we'll probably end the session. This has been basically three hours. <laughs> Which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine with that. It's just damn, time got away from me. I just enjoy I enjoyed the video game too much. Oh, poor thing won't find me. Hell you think of bumping into me? Was uh wait, that wasn't you? Bullshit it wasn't. Get in his and You literally ran up to me to, to say you I bumped into you. You literally ran directly at me and said, You ran into me, you bastard! Okay, so. Okay. Not hold. Hold, okay. Okay, that's not hold. Oh, okay, okay, I can see, okay. 
That I okay. Okay, comparing it like that, yeah, okay, he halted at the end of that one. Okay, that I definitely saw. He stood there like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, comparing it to that, okay. The uppercut combo very much, yeah. He was just holding it at the end there. Okay. Oh, there's another sub story back down here. That's in the exact same spot that I just did that one, so I wonder if it's going to be the exact same sub story. Although we haven't been to the shops here. There's a little shop on the corner here. Did I go to this one? Oh, stone market. Okay. <laughs> little thing out the front. Ooh, fancy. Fancy stone jewelry. Is it just because it's stone and pretty, or is it because of mystical? You just said. <laughs> oh, you sell you sell nice expensive rings here. Okay. Okay. This is where you buy the gifts. If you want to give gifts to the girl, you go here to buy the jewelry. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I was going to go to the pawn shop to buy the accessories for people to wear. <laughs> Grab put a little back up. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just running in the middle of the road. Alright, pawn shop. Pawn shop. Pawn shop. Pawn shop. Pawn shop. Pawn shop. Mushroom. Mushroom. Sorry. Sorry. That got away from me for a second there. Yo. You don't say much. I'm buying shit from ya. Popularity bracelet and a lucky bracelet. <laughs> Uh, I vouch for it myself. Make popular with ladies. I guarantee it. I can't even afford both. I can't afford both. I'm close to affording both. I knew it, dude. You are a pawn shop. Do you want to buy any shit off me? I don't even know what I have on me, honestly. I have a platinum nail. I have a platinum nail. But that. Do you care about the platinum nail? Oh! Okay, I just noticed something this game does. When you sell stuff, you can sell stuff from your item box without having to bring it here. Revolutionary. <laughs> I can literally dump stuff in an item box and still sell it later. Oh my god, yes. Best video game ever made. <laughs> I knew it too. No, I forgot the price of the other things. I don't actually know if that's enough to buy them both. Just, just spend all of my money on some jewelry. Okay. Sort this just so it's up the. Oh, you gotta press square again. Okay. Put it at the top just so it's all up there. There we go. There we go. Got that infinite word money grind. Yeah. Grind all of my money by just doing all by doing that for. Uh, Hell yeah. Did we actually work it? I, I remember people mentioning what the, the bell, but uh, I've completely forgotten. What did the bell do? <laughs> we got the bell because we have other Yakuza save data on here. Because we've played other games, we got the bell, and it fills us with a sense of sadness. Why want to keep the bell on unless you're doing the hostess stuff? That is a good point. Because I forget what the bell did. <laughs> I forget what the bell actually did. Oh, it has some defense on it. It has slight defenses on it. Whoa. More people want to fight. Okay, you ain't getting away from me. People will just make a beeline to fight you if they're being assholes. Okay. Urgh! Yeah, and just holds it there. Okay. That I can see. Yeah! Bam. That's hit me. One, two, three. Urgh! Oh. So, okay, the move's got to hit for him to do the hold stance. If they block it, then he can't do the hold stance. Okay, okay. That is also part of it. If it doesn't hit, you can't hold it. Okay. That is also part of what it means. Okay. Also an important detail to keep a track of. Stop on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if they block it, you still can't do the finishing stance. Okay. Oh my god, I'm getting less and less money from these fuckers every time I fight them. This is some bullshit. Yo! We came by this place when we were talking to Rikia before. Boba tea! I still really need to try some of this. 
I've been meaning to for ages. I just keep not doing it whenever I pass it at work or near work because I'm always busy doing something else whenever I pass it. But I feel like I'd probably enjoy it. <laughs> Bestseller. People can't get enough of our boba. Yeah, the milk one I know is like the stock standard one. Um, Secret of Jasmine can stimulate your appetite. There's tons of boba at the bottom. The matcha ones. Chocolate delight. Okay, I will admit, the black tea and the peach juice, because of the bubbles at the top, they look like fucking beer. <laughs> these look like beer. <laughs> well, these two look like beer. <laughs> Pash fruit juice, sweet potato smoothie. Also got a shitload of boba, and a two-tone two peach smoothie, mango, peanut, lychee. Let's go, let's go adventurous. Let, let's get a milk one. <laughs> Just a milk boba. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like, I know so many people who love boba, and I've just... I, I, know, I, I know I need to try it at some point. I just never have. What other stores we got here? My... Uh, my drugstore! Drugstore! Finally! Yes, <laughs> yes! We finally have places that sell staminons! Okay, they're 3,000 age, so I can't buy any at the moment. But yes, we finally got with the place that sells fucking drugs. That's where it is. Okay, contact lenses. Excuse me, sir, you don't look like someone who needs contact lenses. Hey, you know, I'm not already wearing them. You're still badging yourself up. Are you injured, sir? I like those little... These are these are cute. Just like little things where the person comments on what you're asking to buy. <laughs> Used to go to a boba place all the time. Um, was nice, but I generally preferred the smoothies and stuff. And they also had the smoothies there. But the, this movie still had the boba at the bottom. Just the other ones were specifically the boba teas. This thing is fucking horrifying. <laughs> Sorry, but it's horrifying. <laughs> Kira's always squinting though. Maybe he does need glasses. Nice is angry all the time. Also, fire hydrant. Um. Does anyone want to explain what that means? I know what a fire hydrant is, but is this pole a fire hydrant? Is it saying there's a fi fire hydrant 100 meters up? I need explanations. <laughs> is there a fire hydrant? I can't because I can't see a fire hydrant on the grounds. Like I don't see I don't see the um the lid on lid in the grounds for like that. <laughs> I'm I'm nothing. I've never like noticed any. Oh uh, no, there's no no no. It's not fire hydrants in the other ones, like the traditional standout red ones. No, they're in the other games. You slam someone's butt onto it to hurt them, I think. Or you break people out while you slam someone on it. God, I love those barely able to hold themselves upright old people all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I'm just knocking them all over. Because I'm an asshole. Just run past them and just go bonk. <laughs> bonk on everyone. Alright, you run a little store here. Yes, I must be. Ah, sober. Okay. My famous soba. Don't get any better than this. But what about the other ones? Pigs face him for half a day. Great with Okinawan soba. Tasty Okinawan noodles and tender pork. Yeah, everything here is like specifically Okinawan delicacies. It's cute. Like there's different food here because we're in a different part of Japan. <laughs> Especially being like an island off the side of Japan. <laughs> Again, tourism simulator. I enjoy it. <laughs> Well, anyway, I feel like we spent a lot of time not getting a lot done, but I'm okay with that. It's Yakuza. I I need to be more okay just spending time in Yakuza just doing whatever the hell I want. <laughs> I don't need to treat the games like a giant checklist. The last two games, I did that a little too much. Oh, this dude wants to fight. I'm going to fight you. There ain't going to be no one in this town who don't know me. Like, hell, you can just walk by a Yakuza without me showing respect. <laughs> dude ran up behind me with a knife. Dude ran up behind. Oh, no, he got a sword! Slightly more extreme. <laughs> Who would treat Yakuza as a checklist? <laughs> Deku, you mark off the literal checklist. I mean, like, you treat it as a checklist to get all the completion and stuff and everything like that, yes. But, like, do you also spend time just enjoying yourself until you get to the point where it's like, okay, now I need to actually finish the game, let me focus on actually trying to beat it, or do you treat it like a checklist from the beginning? Because that's what I've done for the last two games, and that's what I don't want to do in the future. 
because the last two games from the beginning of the game I traded it like a checklist and I want to try and avoid that like it takes away some of the magic of the game if you do that from the very beginning obviously I want to complete every sub story so it gets to a point where I need to do that because trying to just accidentally come across um, every sub story isn't going to happen but like for just the time being I'm okay just fut futzing around I'm a former Yakuza. I'm sorry if you give me take it as an apology. I'm getting so little. Some of the fights were giving me 20,000 and now all the fights are giving me 1,000. This is bullshit. I thought it would be a good way to make money, but it turns out it's bullshit. I try not uh, to enter games with I'm going to 100% this mindset. It just kind of happens as I advance in and help with more and more stuff done. You just get to a point where you're just like, I might as well 100% it. I can understand that. I mean, that's what happened with me and fucking Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I did not go into that game thinking I will 100% this. It just ended up getting to a point of... I might as well. I mean, honestly, even Yakuza 0, I wasn't intending on doing every sub-story in that game. I just got to a point where I went, might as well. They're fun and enjoyable and there's a shitload of them. I might as well. And now that I've done it for one, I know I want to do, I know I want to do at least the sub-stories for the others because they're fun. <laughs> like... I feel like doing all the side stories and all the big side content is like enough to just like that's not like that's enough to get as much content and like time in a new and particularly Yakuza game that I want. But anyway, I'm gonna end it there. We still didn't even get every sub story done for this chapter, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm not gonna spend every session just exploring Ryukyu because you know we explored most of Ryukyu this session, so there's not as much for me to explore later on. But you know, still just if I pass by a food place, maybe eat a little uh, food or two there just in case some sub stories proc or anything like that. If I pass by, if I'm thinking about, oh, I should go to the hostess bar at least, like, once a session or so, and we can clear out some stuff. Nearly done with sub stories, <laughs> and the ones missing are pretty long. Well, is that the one down there? I guess the sub stories for, like, any of the hostesses and the, um... Um... The hostess training. I assume none of that's locked out from me in the future. I assume that I can come back and do whatever. I mean, I don't want to be in a situation like I've been in every previous Yakuza game where I try and max out all of the hostesses at once at the very end of the game. But I might have a session in the, like, given that there's 10 of them, I think I might have a session in the future where it's just, all right, I'm going to finish all the hostesses here this session. But try not to make all that at the arse end of the game. <laughs> like, get a little bit, maybe finish off the first hostess here, and then get to a point where it's just like, alright, there's two more here, I'm gonna finish them off. Oh, maybe when we finish now, like, more appear on this list too. Oh, I guess there might be other hostess bars back in Kamarocho, and that's where the other seven out of ten are, or something like that. There's ten. That's more than any previous entry. The, the two of the games had six, the other game had two. There was two hostesses in fucking Guami 1. And that took a long time. There's 10 of them here. That's it. The fact that there's also 10 of them definitely makes me think, yeah, when it comes to ordering food and drink and wearing stuff, I definitely need to, like, look up a guide for that. Otherwise, it'll take way longer. I'm, I am I don't want to look up a guide for answering questions because that's just, again, defeats part of the intrigue of just, like, actually paying attention to characters and learning them and everything like that. But there's not intrigue or anything exciting happening when I wear the right thing through trial and error. If I was playing the game on my own, like, just casually, I'd be way more willing to trial and error a lot of that stuff. But when it comes to doing it for an audience, there's only so much trial and error on that type of stuff that I can do before I think it would be boring to watch. <laughs> so that's why I'm willing to look up a guide for those basic things and, um, and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to end it here. Next time, we'll, there's, well, there's another sub-story. And... Maybe that clears it out. But, like, after I do that sub-story, I will look at the list and go, is there more that I can do right now that aren't, like, hostess-specific? And then I'll go and unlock them and do them, just so I'm not locked out. But I also just think doing all the sub-stories as they're available per chapter is just a nice way to break them all up. I don't want to spend the entire beginning of the game doing nothing but sub-stories, which happened a lot in Yakuza um, 0. Like, a good half of the sub-stories available for Kiryu in total are available at the very beginning of the game. But I think that was deliberate. Because they knew it was going to be for a new audience in the West. So it's just like, here's Kamarocho, here's all the glitz and the glamour. Here's a shitload of sub-stories right at the front of the game to hook you in, to pull you in, and to give you encouragement to explore. And so you get wild shit happening when you explore. I fucking filmed a, a, a music video for Michael Jackson, like, 
five hours into Yakuza 0, and that happened because there's so many sub-stories front-loaded into that game. And that, like, ship is just like, okay, a lot of wild shit happens in this fucking game. So I understand why Yakuza 0 especially did that, but... And, like, as you continue with the story, less and less sub-stories become available because the plot's building up and everything like that, so... Doing all the sub-stories as they're available, I think it's just good pacing. Um, and stuff like that. But I'll end it for here. Next time, more Ryukyu. Possibly some main story. I can't imagine I'll spend forever not doing that. Um, I imagine there will be enough stuff for me to do that I'll be able to get to some of the main story next time. So, until then, this is version 2. Signing out.